questions. Now since midterm exams are drawing near, so let's have a quick session of revision series. So today I'm talking, taking up the chapter chemical reactions and equations. Right? So we start with types of reaction, and to start with first is exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. Endothermic reactions. So what are exothermic reactions? In which heat is evolved. In which heat is evolved. And an endothermic reaction where heat or energy. Here in this case is also an exothermic reaction. Heat or energy is evolved means given out. Or here heat or energy is absorbed or used. Right? So these are the two types of reactions. So in exothermic reactions, we can have few examples. That is burning of fuel. As you know we think it's a fuel. And if it burns in the presence of oxygen, the end product is carbon dioxide, water and plus heat is given out. This indicates the exothermic reaction. So here we will balance this equation. I told you that we will be balancing the equations in between. So two hydrogen, this is we are using the Hinton trial method. Two hydrogen atoms. So there are four. Here we do it multiplied by two. So we get four hydrogen atoms over here and four here. Right? Hydrogen is balanced. Let's check out for oxygen. It is two atoms over here and two atoms over here. So there are four hydrogen oxygen atoms. So here we multiply this oxygen molecule by 2, here becomes, here comes 4 oxygen atoms and again 4 oxygen atoms over here and carbon carbon 1. So this reaction is balanced. Now one example of endothermic reaction in which heat is absorbed. So let's take an example of, that is decomposition of calcium carbonate. When we will heat calcium carbonate in a dry press tube, so what we will get? Calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. Heat is absorbed. Heat is used in this case. So it's an endothermic reaction. Now second type of reactions we are coming here with combination reactions. As the name indicates, it is when one or two elements or one or two compounds or compound or element when they combine to give a single compound their combination reactions. Let's hurry do it. Hydrogen plus oxygen gives you water. Hydrogen plus chlorine gives you HCl. Then calcium oxide plus water gives you calcium hydroxide. Then carbon monoxide plus oxygen gives you carbon dioxide. Right? So now let's balance these equations. It is hydrogen, two atoms over here and two atoms over here. What is not balanced? Oxygen atom. Two atoms are over here. So let's do, put two over here. Now two oxygen and two oxygen. But here hydrogen becomes four. So we have to multiply here by two. And this is known as hit and trial method. And why I am giving you this balancing of equations? Because I am not taking out up separately. The moment when we will be doing this type of reactions in the coming section also, we will be doing balancing side by side. Now same here, chlorine 2 multiplied by 2, hydrogen becomes 2, hydrogen get 2. So now this equation is balanced. Now see here, in first phase you can see it's a combination of two elements giving you single compound. And in this case, combination of two compounds giving you single compound. So let's see whether it's balanced or not. Two hydrogen, two hydrogen. Oxygen two, oxygen two. Calcium one, calcium one. So equation is already balanced. Now in this case, carbon monoxide plus oxygen, it gives carbon dioxide. So let's see, oxygen is Two oxygen, two oxygen. Now here oxygen are three atoms. So let's try to do it with the hit and dry matter. What do we have? Four hydro oxygen atoms. So I'll put two over here. Two oxygen here, two oxygen. Four, o 
oxygen becomes 4, carbon 2. So this equation is balanced. So let's take an example of one compound and one element. It is carbon monoxide along with oxygen. So let's see. Sorry, not carbon dioxide with carbon. So what do we get over here? We get again carbon monoxide. See. So let's balance it. Oxygen 2, I'll put 2 over here. Carbon becomes 2, so 2 carbon. So this equation is balanced. So we can see different types of combination reactions. Element, 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 element combines to give one single compound. Compound and compound gives one single compound. But here in this case, this is a compound, this is an element, gives a single Again compound, again element. So three different types of combination reaction here we are having. Now next is the decomposition reactions. Now the third type is decomposition reactions. So what are decomposition reactions? As the name indicates, decompose means breakage, splitting of single compound into two or three single compounds, right? So let's have decomposition reactions where heat is involved. And such reactions are known as thermal, thermal means heat, thermal decomposition reactions. Right? And it has to be very quick in revision. We have potassium chloride with heat. Then we'll have ferrous sulfate. Since seven water molecules as water of crystallization is here, so they are, this is hydrated ferrous sulfate, right? And next is lead nitrate, PdNO3 twice. We will heat all these compounds separately. And then we have calcium carbonate, we will heat this also. And then we will also heat copper sulfate. Again, it is hydrated salt, blue color with 5 water molecules as water of crystallization. Again, we will heat this. So can you see all these compounds? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I take it collectively. Let's see how do they decompose. Using note the point, they are all being heated. That's why we are saying that is decomposition with the help of heat. So thermal decomposition. Is it clear? Now how does, how do, how does this potassium chloride decompose? we will get potassium chloride plus oxygen as a gas. Ferrous sulfate. No doubt we do it with two steps, but here I will be doing directly. This is a green color salt. It is also known as green vitriol. First it will lose water. It will turn from green to white. That is an hydrosol. And on further heating, we will get ferrous, ferric oxide Fe2O3. This is brown in color. Along with the evolution of two gases, that is oxides of sulfur, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, we have to remember here that these gases have a smell of burning sulfur. You can say smells like burning sulfur. This is the characteristic feature of this decomposition. Next is lead nitrate. How it gives? We will get first lead monoxide, it's a yellow color compound, yellow powder, and then we get brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide and along with a gas that is oxygen, which is a supporter of combustion. Now, one thing is to be noted over here. In all these thermal decomposition reactions, look at the compound and the corresponding gases they are releasing. Chlorate, it's oxygen gas. Then sulfate, sulfate here also and sulfate here also. When sulfate decomposes, you are getting sulfur dioxide and sulfur dioxide in both cases. So it's easy and quick to remember. Then if nitrate is decomposed, so we get nitrogen dioxide. And the characteristic feature of this gas is they are brown fumes in the neck of the gas to be find. So whenever there is a Indication brown films are there. You close your eyes and re just recollect it. It's purely nitrogen dioxide gas. Yes. Now, calcium carbonate, when carbonate decomposes, you get carbon dioxide gas. Yes. And on the other hand, we'll do it in, uh, in 
combination reaction you must have seen, whenever carbon dioxide combines with any compound, you get a carbonate salt. Is it fine now? So, now next step is the balancing of these equations. I told you, we will be doing balancing side to side. So, 3 oxygen, 2 oxygen. So, best way is to come to a common platform, multiply this with 2, you get 3, 2 is a 6, 6 oxygen. And it is 2 multiplied by 3, 2, 3 is a 6. We both say we get 6, 6 oxygen happens, right? Now, here potassium becomes 2. So you make 2 over here. Chlorine also becomes 2. Automatically chlorine here. So balancing is done. Now you see balancing of this. In this case, I will not consider this 7 water molecules. Because as I told you, it takes place in 2 steps. And first step, water molecules, they get evaporated. So we will see only ferrous effect and how it decomposes. 2 iron atoms. So here, 2. Clear? Now see. How many oxygen atoms? 4, 2 is 8. Here is it 3, 4, 5, 8. Oxygen is balanced. Sulfur 2, 1, 2. Here we have 2 sulfur. So the equation is balanced. Okay, now for calcium carbonate, we can see the equation is already balanced. Calcium, calcium 1 atom. Carbon, carbon 1. And oxygen 3. Here it is 2 plus 1, 3. Now coming to copper sulfate. Here again, as in case of ferrosulfate, like as in case of ferrosulfate, we will ignore five water molecules. So copper sulfate, it decomposes as copper oxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide, or oh, I have missed oxygen over here. Oxygen gas is also given out in this reaction. So let's see this balancing. Two sulfur, here one sulfur, let's multiply it by two. Again, I am doing the little trial method. Now check for copper. So here, let's multiply this with 2. Now next step is to check for the oxygen atoms. How many oxygen atoms? 2, 2, 4, 5, 6 and 9. Here we get odd number. So let's multiply this. Let's change it with 4. Since it is little trial method, if this is 4, here also it should be 4. Let's check out 4 copper atoms, 4 copper. Then how many sulfur? 4. So here we have 1 and 1. Let's do it over here. 2 here, 2 here. Sulfur 4. Now let's check out oxygen now. 4, 4 is 16. 4, 4, 8, 10 and 3, 2 is 6. Now this equation is also balanced. Now next type of decomposition is the help of electricity. So energy will be used in the form of electricity. And such reactions are known as electrolytic decomposition reactions. Three reactions in this case we will be doing. One is the electrolytic decomposition of water. We will pass electricity through acid-related water. Acid-related water means in which few drops of any acid, maybe sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid is added. It helps in a quick ionization. Right? So we will get hydrogen gas and we will get oxygen gas. So let's do it in detail. Take a plastic mug, make two holes with the help of a drill, then insert two electrodes, attach it with the battery. And fill this mug with water, acid-related water, and invert two water-filled test tubes over it. Is it fine? This diagram is important. After you pass the electricity through it, then in few minutes you will find that there is downward displacement of water, and you will be finding. The collection of the gases with the help of the bubbles will be there and you will find this is cathode, sorry this positive terminal, this is anode and this negative terminal is the cathode and in negative terminal you will find a gas that is hydrogen with a double volume and in positive terminal the gas with half the volume of this gas 
and it is oxygen gas. So oxygen will be collected at NO and hydrogen will be collected at NO. Remember and note the important this thing. The volume of hydrogen is double to the volume of oxygen. The ratio is 2 is to 1. You don't have to be very elaborate in giving the answer. Now how the questions will come? You may be asked directly. Draw the diagram to show the electrolytic decomposition of water or it is also known as electrolysis of water. Now next, if diagram is already drawn in the exam, in the paper, you may be asked to write name the gases A and B. So with volume double, you write it is hydrogen and with volume half, you write it is oxygen. And why is it so? Because in one molecule of water, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So ratio is 2 is to 1. Don't forget to write by volume. Because by mass it is 1 by 8. The next type of electro uh, decomposition reaction, again with the help of electricity, is sodium chloride liquid. Now, we have to pass electricity through it through molten sodium chloride. Why it is molten? It's not an aqueous solution. Means you have to melt it. It is melted with very high, at a very high temperature. So what do we get? We get sodium solid and we get chlorine gas. So this is the method of extraction of sodium also. Next is alumina Al2O3, aluminum oxide. Again, it's molten. That's why we are writing liquid, not aqueous. This is to be specially noted. Again, you pass electricity through it. We will get again metal at the cathode. Sodium also at cathode. This also at cathode. And then oxygen gas at anode. Here also chlorine also we get at anode. So what is it? This decomposition reaction we also use it due for the extraction of the metal. Now the next type of decomposition reaction is with the help of sunlight. We get two salts, either silver chloride or silver bromide. Both are white in color. Now put it in a channel dish. You can see this diagram in your NCRT book also. Expose it to sunlight. So when sunlight will fall, the silver chloride, which is white in color, after some time, you will get only silver that is gray in color. Gray will be left. Here we can write this reaction. We will get silver. We change the pen. This is silver solid, grey in colour and with the evolution of chlorine gas, it will be revolved up in the air. So what you can see in the channel after, white colour powder changes to clear grey colour powder which is nothing but a silver metal. Here in the same, in the same, it is silver plus bromine gas. Balancing we will do it here also, on these reactions also. Chlorine 2, chlorine 2. Sodium becomes 2, so this is balanced. Aluminium 2, here multiplied by 2. Oxygen 3, so what we have to do is multiply by 2. 3 to the 6, here 2, 3 to 6. Aluminium becomes 4, so let's do it as 4. Since I told you, say it in the other Here also silver, chlorine 2, multiplied by 2. Silver becomes 2, here. Here is same, bromine 2, silver becomes 2. So these were the three different types of decomposition reactions. Now, in my next video, we will be discussing the important questions of balancing the chemical equations 